Well, the great debate is upon us between Joe Biden and Donald Trump as they once again contest the 2024 election. And nothing screams transparency like a closed circuit debate with no live audience and the ability to cut either opponent's mic. So we'll see what comes out of it. But what I wanted to share with you are these slides which show the demographics in our population which is really driving home prices. And first of all, I want to give a shout out to our friends at MBS Highway who do such a great job of providing insight into the mortgage industry, lots of great visuals, tools uh, to help understand what's going on and perhaps the direction things are headed. And so here we're looking at a chart of the generations going back to the silent generation, the baby boomers, generation X, millennials, all the way to the post millennial generation. And it's interesting to note the ebbs and flows in the population, particularly of note is here in 1973, shortly after the passage of Roe versus Wade. And we see how the number of births really dropped off. That'll happen with the passage of Roe versus Wade. But what's important to note is that the average age of the median or the median age of the first time home buyer is 33 years old. So we got to look what happened 33 years from this milestone event. So as we fast forward here in time, 33 years past that 1973 date when the population dropped off, we come to the year 2006. And here we're looking at a bar chart of orange bars which represent uh, housing completions, the homes are being built by builders, and the blue bars that represent household formations which are new demand, new families moving into homes. And we see that the population, the number of formations dropped off dramatically in 2006 uh, through the mid 2000s, which kind of lines with you know the passage of Roe versus Wade and the, the drop off of births during Generation X. Consequently, that led to a housing crash because we had a glut of inventory and not enough bodies to fill those homes. So given that it wasn't that long ago, only 15 years ago, people have it in their fresh in their memory still. And they think that given where home prices are now, given where interest rates are now, we got to be bound for another housing correction or another housing crash. But it's not that simple and it's not the way that we need to look at these numbers. Um, the other important thing to note is that not only uh, in about the year 2021, there were roughly 12 million more people in the country than when we had in 2006, but there was also less inventory. Well, since then, we've had another 10 million people of illegal immigrants that have come into the country since 2020. And those people need a place to live too. And it's going to put additional demand on the housing industry because let's face it, they can't all live at the Roosevelt Hotel in New York City. And so this is something that's gonna to continue to uh, drive the demand and drive home prices up. Now, when we look at the existing home inventory compared to where we were in 2006, we see we are considerably lower levels. Again, there was rampant speculation both on behalf of builders as well as home buyers, which caused the number of homes to be built to skyrocket. And there simply weren't the number of people there. See how much the inventory has dropped off. And again, in the last four years alone, 10 million people have come into the port into the country and these people need a place to live. So it'll be interesting tonight to see if in the debate, discussion comes up about the affordability of housing, uh, the strain that it's putting on the housing market. That said, if you're a home buyer and looking to get into the market, pay attention to these numbers because the most important thing to realize is that the housing market is going to be supported for the foreseeable future simply because of demographics. We have a lot of people in the country and we don't have the amount of inventory needed to put them all in homes because builders have simply slowed down on their pace of building as it doesn't pencil out quite as well with higher interest rates right now, the cost of construction. And so that's why we continue to see a lack of inventory. Granted, inventory has gradually improved over the last couple months, which is good news, but it's still not where it needs to be to be a quote unquote normal market, which is roughly four to five months worth of inventory. We only have about 3.2 months worth of inventory. So let's see how things go in the debate tonight and how things go moving forward. Good luck.